Tyron, something that must have felt pretty good, though, is Dana White mentioning your name, tying it to Robbie Lawler at a UFC 201 or 202 show. Yeah, you know, that, that, felt, that felt good that it was, you know, put out there that this is something in the conversation. I think fans need a, they need a reminder. Some people are like, oh, he hasn't done anything in his last fight. It, it's just so hilarious what our sport has become. It, it's really like the little fish from Finding Nemo. Our fans are like Dory. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they remember something, and they keep repeating, and then if you say something, they repeat it over and over again, and they don't even really do the research and look into it. Like, I could have argued that I was deserving of a title shot after I beat Carlos Condit, mm -hmm. which was a ways back. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when people say, oh, you don't deserve it, under this, nobody deserves a title shot. And I said that to you after World 96. Nobody deserves a title shot because – at times, it's given based upon entertainment, um, pay-per-view buys, needle pushers, who's going to talk about. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's given based on a person doing enough with an octagon to maybe warrant the title. I think we're seeing a shift change. Look at look at um, um, Amanda Nunes. Right. Getting a shot against. That was solid. Hey, look at Eddie Alvarez getting a shot against um, um, <clears throat> my man Hoffa. So if you're looking at it, I think it's a shift, and I think I will fit in that category as well. You have to be given the opportunity to become the superstar. Carlos Condon, um, uh, GSP begging for a title shot. One second. None of those people became a superstar until they were given the opportunity to be a superstar. Just give me the chance, brother. I don't. I don't need. I don't need a lot of help. I mean, I've been self promoting myself for a very long time. I've been out here hitting the pavement for a very long time. I need a 16th of the amount of marketing around the Ross here at Conor McGregor. Literally, an eighth, a 16th. That's all I really need. And I can take it the rest of the way. So <clears throat> that's just my goal, man, to be put in position to show I'm the best in the world. I don't want a title shot. That's the most ridiculous statement. I, oh, I want the title shot. I want the title shot. Like, that means you want a chance to fight in the title fight and lose. You just want the shot to fight in it. I want a shot to show you I'm the best in the world. There you go. Tyron, uh, I'll turn it over to Goes here in just a second. My last thing is, through these last couple months, we were discussing in the early part of the show, you know, who, I guess, I mean, I, you, you really had to go through a lot, man. It's like your emotions have been toyed with right. quite a lot these last few months. But who, in your opinion, was the biggest thorn in your side? Was it GSP and you know, the fact that he can just come back and maybe get next? Was it Conor McGregor? Was it Nate Diaz when he beat Conor McGregor? Like, who were you fearing the most that might take your, uh, well, I hate to say it, but your title shot? Um, uh, GSP for sure. GSP, because yeah. I mean, who He's can argue? He's a wild that? card. Yeah, I, mean, I, I can argue anybody else. But who can argue the reigning champion, the best welterweight to ever grace the octagon, coming back and wanting to take what you know was what 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 excuse me what once was his? I can't really argue that. Yeah. And then also, just think he brings the entire country of Canada. He's an international and global superstar. He's not just a star within you know the UFC. So with that said, I don't have that big of an argument. You know, I'm going to get squashed on that. 